بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم بردر اینڈ سسٹرس یو آر آن ولور ہمٹن رمضان ریڈیو ولور ہمٹن ایٹی سیون پوائنٹ نائن ایف ایم اینڈ یو می بی لسننگ آن ولڈ وائڈ ویب رمضان ریڈیو وولس ڈاٹ کام اور ادر سوشل میڈیا وی ہیو گٹ ایپ اویلیبل سو یو کین ڈاؤن لوڈ اٹ اینڈ وی کین جوائن اس اور یو کین ٹیکسٹ اس آن زیرو سیون فور فور زیرو فور Four three two. I would like to welcome you, Brother Khalid is here as well today. Assalamu alaikum. Um, today um, we, inshallah, will be going through with new two tools, uh, inshallah, which will uh, help you to improve your uh, parenting skills. Last week, what we covered? Yesterday. Oh my God! I don't said forget. it again. <laughs> Gosh. Yes. Uh, yesterday we covered praise and criticism and uh, how. We need to make sure that we guide our children um, through a um, proper way. Uh, rather than criticizing them, uh, we need to help them to improve uh, our relationship with them. Uh, one thing uh, yesterday, when I went back home, my wife mentioned, um, we were talking about criticism, um, and uh, she mentioned sometimes parents don't know or don't realize whether they're criticizing Uh, or not, because that's probably the way they've been raised and that's their way of you know, uh, dealing with the situation. And that was a valid point, uh, which I said, thank you very much. Uh, I will share that uh, uh, with our audience tomorrow, uh, our listeners tomorrow, and uh, that's what I did now, because I mean, sometimes we don't know how to basically handle the situation. Uh, another thing uh, which we need to uh, look at, that uh, when we are helping our children, Uh, it is very easy to be negative as a parent. Uh, so please try not to do that because that will have an impact on their uh, mental health and that basically keeps them away from us, um, that situation, uh, when we are criticizing our children too much because that is not the way to help our children and uh, to raise them, raise them in, in this uh, world. Okay, right. Today's topic is basically we are going to go through uh, discipline Uh, how we're going to set boundaries, and uh, there is another interesting topic which we all need, and uh, how how do we calm ourselves down, right, when the situation arises, when we are uh, heated up, or our children, uh, right, how we're going to help them to make sure they understand how to calm down before we start making, you know, just uh, throwing tantrum away or whatever. Uh, so what, what, what's going to happen? So first we're going to start uh, with discipline and how to set boundaries. Okay, go to Khalid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Wherever you are listening in the world, welcome again to Parenting Skills Show on uh, Ramadan Radio Wolverhampton. Uh, just that, pick up on that point, Abrar, that you just made, um, that parents don't know when they're criticizing So there's a difference between, remember we said, between criticizing and motivating and guiding. Criticizing generally is negative and puts children down. Guiding and motivating is usually uplifting. It's correcting, but giving them a way to go forward. Mm -hmm. So that's generally the, the, the way forward. Uh, guiding is more positive and it's more motivating. Yeah? I agree. Okay, so um, discipline. Can I ask you, Brother Brar, put you on the spot a bit. My God. What do you think the typical understanding of discipline is? <clears throat> uh, If I said to you discipline in a child, what kind of picture comes to your mind? Without looking at my notes or without going uh, you know, into the things which we basically use in our uh, programs, uh, the discipline, when I look at it, the word, it makes me realize there's going to be punishment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Absolutely. yeah, that is the main main you know mentality before I joining joined this course. That was the main mentality or main understanding of mine was yeah. If there is a discipline, there should be a puni there, there may be a punishment. Yeah, you're right there. So the word discipline, um, it's usually understood by people to mean punishment. Yeah. So the idea of positive discipline can be very strange for parents. You know, how can you have positive discipline? Because we normally, as parents, associate discipline with punishment or rules, maybe smacking even, God forbid, or something like this. So the idea of positive discipline may be strange at first. But inshallah, <coughs> let's look at that today. So the, have you, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody's heard of the word, dis, uh, word disciple. Disciple, like Hazrat Isa, he said that he had disciples. 
um, many other prophets had disciples around them. So the word disciple <coughs> means a follower. So prophets had disciples. They were people who followed them. So <coughs> the word discipline and disciple are related. So actually the word disciple is a positive word. It's not negative because disciple is one who follows, one who is guided. So f even from the word itself, um, we can understand that it's actually meant to be a positive thing and not a negative thing, as we most people understand it to be. <coughs> so discipline is actually a system for guiding children, not punishing them. I'm going to say that again because that's so important. Discipline is a system for guiding children, not punishing them. Okay, so what's the point of disciplining children, you may ask? Well, the point is that we want to help them to learn important skills which they can use for the rest of their lives. So things like what? The ability to take and to give. Yeah, or to give and take. Very, very important. That's part of discipline, positive discipline. You're teaching your children the ability to give and take. In this world, not everything uh, happens according to me. And I have to realize that and I have to develop that understanding. And I have to appreciate that. There'll be things in this world, things in my life which are happening, which I don't have control over. Other people have got that control. So the ability to give and take is very, very important. We have to teach our children about that. <coughs> We're teaching our children to think about other people's needs as well as our own. This is also part of positive discipline. Teach your children to think about other people's needs as well as their own. You know, sometimes children, they may misbehave because they want something which somebody else has got. So what happens? It causes an argument, maybe exchange of words, maybe uh, emotions run high. So what happens is they start fighting and arguing, whatever. <clears throat> but if we can teach our children to think about other people's needs, if somebody's got something, maybe they need it at that time. Yeah. So the idea of that other people also need things just as we need things. <coughs> we we're teaching our children how to relate well to other people. So this is also part of good discipline. Teaching your children the skills in relating well to other people. Sorry, we're not going into too much detail because, as I say, um, these are done face-to-face. -face, uh, uh, these things are delivered in face-to-face -face sessions. So we may not go into the depth of each point as we normally would. But just to give you an idea and a taster about what these things are. <coughs> we also teach our children about ta learning to take responsibility for their own actions. Teaching our children to take responsibility for their own actions and honoring their promises. This is also Islamically a very good thing to do and we encourage that whatever you are responsible for, you should uh, make sure you fulfill that responsibility and if you're honoring any promises or trusts, that they are uh, discharged properly. We're also teaching um, our children um, how to look after themselves in practical ways. How to look after themselves in practical ways. Ah, I believe we have a caller. Okay, let's take that call. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum caller. Assalamualaikum, Islam, brother. Uh, I'm listening to your program yesterday as well as, as today. <laughs> Thank you very and much. Jazakallah. You're doing a very good job. Uh, I've, it's make me to call you to put my personal experience, okay. like you saying yesterday, the praise the children. Uh -huh. uh, long time ago, maybe you remember or not, the film came, Grunch, English film. Yeah. What was the name again? And Grunch. Grunch. Yeah. Okay. And that film changed my view to treat the children. And also, I've seen the benefit out of it. Okay. 
Very good. Uh, like uh, for my, I can say my personal experience. Like my child is very hyper. Yeah. I always called him a monster before. Mm-hmm. Called him and, a what? Sorry. Uh, after that film, I called him angel. Okay, mashallah. Okay, so yeah. And that word is changed his behavior totally. Right. That's good. Okay, very good. And uh, mashallah, he's uh, grown up as a very good gentleman. Okay. Oh, mashallah. Sorry, good. sister. What did you say your name was? Sorry. What did you say your name was, sister? Uh, before I called him monster because when he's annoying me, I just called him monster. And then no, no. What's I your name? Yeah. Sorry, I was asking what your name was, sister. Your your own name. Yes, and uh, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes then the child start living into that situation, and yeah. always I'm saying to him when he's studying, you can do it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Especially when nowadays, um, that's why another reason I'm calling nowadays, the children coming to exam time. Yeah. And uh, if we, as a parents, we don't say, oh, so and so people, children is so intelligent, but we have to say, children, you can do it. Okay. I think that word is encourage the children to work more hard. Okay. Thank you very much, sister, for calling. I, I think you made a really good point there that the, the language that we use with our children is very important. So our good behavior towards our children also breeds good behavior in our children ourselves. Thank you very much for your call, inshallah. We'll talk to you again, in, inshallah, sometime. Thank you very much for ringing, sister. <clears throat> the final point I was saying about the point of discipline is that we're teaching our children how to look after themselves in practical ways rather than them staying dependent on others. This is very important. So these are all points as to why discipline or disciplining our children is very, very important. Remember, the idea of disciplining our children is so they can follow a system that you've put in place. Anything to add, Brother Brad, before I move on? Okay, yeah, no, I think the way you are basically saying, um, so if I conclude that in in, uh, probably one line, is the way uh, we help our children to grow up in a confident and independent and responsible way, so that making them confident... Uh, so they can live their life in a very, very confident way. So it's, that's the way, basically, rather than just depending on us all the time, I would, can't make any decisions. So that 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 is the sort of thing. Uh, so okay, yeah. Okay. So um, a very important point here. Uh, usually, we punish children when we can't think what else to do. Fair point. Message in uh, on our WhatsApp number zero seven double four oh four two oh four three two. Um, Agree with that point or disagree? Usually, we punish children, our children, when we can't think what else to do. Or when we're so angry that we lose control. We, When I say we, I mean parents. Fair point. Text us uh, a message if you agree or disagree. Thank you very much. Inshallah, the next point that I'm moving to, or the topic, it's, it's actually under the topic of discipline, is setting boundaries. So you want your children... To be disciplined. But what's the boundaries that you're setting for your children? So, for example, how do your children know what's right or wrong? Do you really need to set the boundaries? Sorry, I interrupted you. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> Sorry, I said, you know, do we I'm really... I'm trying to stay <laughs> calm here, brother, bro. Did you notice that? <clears throat> I just want to... Yeah, so do we really need to set any boundaries? Okay, the point about boundaries is... <clears throat> I'll put you on spot, sorry. Thank you very much for that, (laughs) Brother Abrar. I'm sure the listeners are uh, uh, fully appreciating that. Uh, But staying calm and trying to answer you. Um, The point about setting boundaries. Can you see this table in front of me here? Yes, I can, yeah. Yeah? This table has got an edge or a boundary to it. Mm -hmm. If I say to you, Abrar, uh, can you put that table, uh, can you put that bottle on that table? You know exactly where that table where ends, table yeah? Ends, yes. Mm-hmm. You can see the limit or the extent mm-hmm. of the of the of the table. Mm-hmm. So if you put it on the floor That's beyond the boundaries. That's beyond the boundaries, isn't yeah, it? That's it. And because I gave you clear instructions, mm-hmm. you're gonna most likely what? Put it on top on of the, top table. the table. 
So it's clear yeah. that, yes, what yeah. you are expecting from me Because to do. Because you know that yes. this table there, you can visualize it, you can it. see the extent yeah. or the edge of it. If mm-hmm. I say to you, Brother Brad, can you please put that bottle on top of the table? Mm-hmm. You're not going to put it on the carpet, on the are carpet, you? Yeah. Because you know what the boundary is. Clear so, communication. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So <clears throat> they say that broadly, there's four main kinds of boundaries that a parents may set for their children and te- teenagers. And these four boundaries are, are as follows. The first one, they call it a constricting type setting of boundaries. This is where, and uh, uh, unfortunately you can't see the picture, <coughs> but each one has got a caption to it. And the caption for the constricting type of uh, boundary setting is that there's an individual, probably a child, behind prison bars. So you're keeping an eye on that child 24-7, in, yeah. in other words. Basically, oh. constricting is lots of rules, lots of regulations, often backed up with severe punishments. Very little room to explore, kind of do-as-you're-told mentality, almost like a dictatorship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's one way that people set boundaries. The child has got no room for ne- maneuvering, no room for negotiating. Do as you're told, my way or the highway, okay? <clears throat> and what do people understand as that and what do they feel when people are asked? They said, if we are constricted or over-controlled, we may become rebellious and uncooperative. Very important point, yeah? The second uh, type of boundary setting that is known is known as the inconsistent type of boundary setting. And the caption for this one is, you have a child <clears throat> and he's got arrows pointing in different directions. He doesn't know which way should I go, should I go this way or this way. Child is very unsure. So in this way... Sorry, uh, it is uh, the sort of thing when you are giving instructions one day, you are <laughs> really happy with, with the playing, whatever they're playing yeah. uh, in a room. You yeah. come in or you appreciate, oh, well done, you're playing together today. Very, very good, very nice. And the next day you're coming in and you start shouting at them. Yeah, exactly. Is that the sort of thing, scenario you can imagine uh, with the child when you are restricting on one day and you're very pleased another day? Yeah. So that gives a very confusing sort of uh, um, message to the child. Yeah, one day was really good and now what happened? Yeah, so, absolutely. So in the inc- inconsistent setting uh, of boundaries... It's often a mixture of constricting and absent. In other words, strict one day and indulgent or neg- neglectful the other day. For example, a uh, father comes into the house and the kids are playing. He joins in. He starts playing with them. Yeah. Next day, father comes in, the kids are playing, and he says, What are you doing? You made a mess in the living room. Tidy this up now. Yeah. The kids are thinking, Hold on. Yesterday, we were playing the same game. And dad joined in. Today we're playing the same game and dad's gone angry. What, what's going on? Yeah. So the problem is not probably the kids. It's pro- probably because the dad's in a, in, in a bad place. He's about, had a bad day at work or something or something like that. So be consistent. Yeah. So this is the inconsistent way. Child thinks, I don't know what to do now. Should I play this game? Should I not? I don't know how dad's going to react to me. You know, whether he's going to be happy today. He's going to be sad today. He's going to be angry today or... Whatever. So, you know, it's the inconsistent way. <coughs> With this one, people understand that inconsistent boundaries <coughs> can be very uh, confusing and make people feel insecure. Okay? The Next. third one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is no boundaries. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So parents are happy with whatever the children yeah. are doing. Kind of everything goes. Everything goes. Yeah. So the ch- child is very happy right at the beginning but what happens to that personality of that child there is no boundaries there's no restriction no right or wrong and that child can be a very you can imagine yeah. i don't have to say anything yeah so if you don't put any boundaries that child can do anything whatever time they want to get up whatever they want time to go to sleep whether they're doing their homework whether they're going just going eating the right food where, where they're behaving with other people where they're behaving with you so if there are no boundaries then you can't basically blame anybody but to your family's <coughs> structure and to, not to, you know, just to give that child a guidance 
not criticizing that child because that child doesn't know. He hasn't got any manual when he came down on this earth, right? You are the one as a parent and I am the one as a parent. We need to make sure there are some limits, there are some uh, boundaries which we help them, to guide them, to make them understand why these uh, boundaries are there. Right, before we move on to the next one, can I just remind you our text number 07440420432. And thank you very much, everybody who is basically texting us. Thank you very much for listening to our Ramadan radio walls um, on 87.9 or ramadanradiowalls.com or on our app, or any of the social media. Thank you very much. And I hope these tip, tools, tools and techniques, or these tips, will help you to improve your parenting skills and that make a difference to your life. One important, po- another point, Brother Brad, is about this absent of um, this kind of style of setting. From the child's point of view, if, if everything goes, in other words, yeah, I can do whatever I want, it also sends another dangerous message for the children. A child that has no boundaries will sometimes feel that nobody cares about me. Yeah? I can do whatever I want at whatever time I want. Nobody's going to ask me. Yeah. And it can also signal to the child, you know what? Mm-hmm. Nobody cares whether I'm coming or going, whether it's late or early, whether I'm eating or not. I can do whatever I want. So this is also something very dangerous that should, mm-hmm. we should be mindful of, mm-hmm. that children don't get this message that we actually don't care about them. Yeah, do what you want, carry on, everything goes. One thing I just want to share with you, Brother Khalid, I mean, uh, normally I share this with my children, that uh, I just give them an example of our, our back garden. And we've got a few trees, bushes, you know, grass and everything. And uh, whenever we have communication uh, about you know, a certain topic, I bring that in and I just uh, share with them and just ask them, if I don't, or your mom, right, my wife, if we don't care about that garden, what will happen to that? Yeah. And that exactly the same thing happens with our children. If we don't set boundaries, if we don't trim them, if we don't help them, if we don't guide them in the right direction, they can be just like a garden which has got no limits. Grass is growing, bushes are basically going, and uh, trees are just uh, creating problems for neighbors. So this is a personality of our child which we need to really, really work on. And that pays off, not here only in this world, but that will pay off, inshallah, in our next life as well because one of the most important Sadaqai Jariya is our own children, right? If they are good, inshallah, they will basically do duas for us. Uh, they will, inshallah, help us in the hereafter. And that basically set a basically guideline or ruling for when they become children, um, parents. They will have a good you know, life. Okay, the final point. This is the final type of uh, boundary. And this is the most important one. And this is the one we as parents should try and achieve. This is the, the type of setting of boundaries which is clear and consistent. What do we mean by that? Clear and con- uh, setting clear and consistent boundaries means it's safe. The, there's fair limits with clear expectations. Yeah? Stability with plenty of room to explore and grow. It's like you know, everybody ha- can have their say. They call it like a democracy, but unfortunately some people have different understanding on that. So in a clear and consistent uh, way of setting boundaries, everything's clear. There's fair boundaries to help us feel secure and safe. Yeah, Secure and safe to explore within the boundaries and to even test them sometimes. This leads the children to be confident. They're able to try things without taking any foolish risks. And it teaches them to respect others. So these are helpful boundaries. Uh, there's consistency in there, particularly when um, we're talking about children who are young. This is very, very important. Ask yourself, which of these boundaries do you identify with? Are your boundaries consist- constricting, very strict? Is it un- inconsistent? You're giving mixed messages to your children. Is it absent where everything goes? Or do you set clear and consistent boundaries where your children are clear, but you are, you are also clear. So ask yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that, that's a very good point. So at least if, if we don't understand ourselves, uh, what, whether we have set any boundaries or not, 
our children, they won't know if ch- child is only you know, three or four years old or probably a teenager. If we don't set any boundaries, then they will not be able to know. And as they are tomorrow's, um, today's children, tomorrow's parents. So just make sure we raise them in a way that they contribute in their lives, make sure they are confident people, as Brother Khalid was earlier mentioning. Uh, so it is it's very, very important. Please, please pay some attention to these tools and techniques, and I hope these will make a difference to your life. Inshallah, after the break, we are going break in 30 seconds. Uh, after the break, we will be joining... Uh, Sister, Sister Rima Shaheen, Rima Shaheen yes. will be joining us, uh, who took part in our parenting course, and uh, both husband and wife um, basically enjoy benefiting from uh, this course. And inshallah, she will share her experience, she will share her knowledge um, with, with you. Uh, so stay with us. Uh, keep texting us. Thank you very much. We have some texts from Pakistan. Thank you very much. I just remind you our number, 074 074- Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us in the first session <coughs> of this show, uh, where we discussed about uh, different types of discipline, different types of uh, boundaries, and what are the benefits of these boundaries. Uh, they, they are going to help us to make sure that uh, our family uh, is uh, going in the right direction. And we mentioned constricting, uh, inconsistent, absent, and uh, clear and uh, consistent boundaries and the benefits of these. Uh, just to men- Thank you. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, our guest is with us. Thank you very much, brother, for letting me know. I am still just trying my best to, you know. Okay, right. Uh, there we go. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Is that Sister Rima? Yes, it is. Welcome, Sister Rima. How are you? You okay? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. How's your How Ramadan you going? Going very well, thank you. And very fast and as well. well? Yes, Sorry? very very good, Alhamdulillah. And it's going very fast as well. I said it's going fast for you as well? Too fast. It's going too fast. far too quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, yeah. So basically, um, Sister Rima, you have been on one of our... Uh, courses. Um, I know, unfortunately, we weren't able to complete because of the lockdown, but we just wanted yeah. to get kind of a, a mother's feedback on this course that we run, just to give our listeners um, a kind of flavor of um, kind of feedback from a parent, really. The unique thing yeah. about yourself um, is that yourself and your husband have been on the course, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, we've okay. both been on it, yeah. Okay, so did your husband go on the course before you? Yeah, initially he was um, invited um, to attend the course with some other uh, fathers and it was the first time that the course was being run in mm-hmm. our mosque. Okay. And um, when he had the invite, I think at first he just thought, oh, it's going to be like another course to tick off. But um, after the first session, he came back quite excited and with a different opinion about it. Wow, he was. He used to then, after every session, come home and like tell me what they'd learned and stuff. And it was quite, I think it was different to what he was expecting. And it's actually benefited both of us a lot. Did he say how it was different? It was looking at things from a different point of view. I think as parents, and especially as mothers, you just think that you're naturally, you know it, you know how to deal with the situation and how to deal with yeah. your kids, you know how to deal with them. That's right. Um, but sometimes we forget the basics and just I think looking at things from a child's point of view and with this course I think that was the different it was the way it was delivered was very good um, because it wasn't just staring at a screen and reading off it was very getting involved Mm -hmm. um, and we used to kind of put ourselves in role play positions where we'd uh, we were in like groups and then somebody would be the parent, somebody would be the child and you'd and reenact things and see how you felt yeah. when you were told things by a parent in a certain way mm-hmm. and how then if they just maybe worded it differently or um, their uh, physical um, stance, if they maybe sat down, came onto your level, how things felt then. And right. um, so I think just little things that you don't sometimes pay attention to make a big difference and that's what it just made us kind of take a step back and look at how we were doing things okay what's what change did you, did you see in your husband as a result of this course 
I think what the main thing I noticed with him, he used to kind of, um, I don't want to say too much in case I get in trouble. No, you, <laughs> well, you won't. I'm sure you, you won't. won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I, I feel like he started to get more involved. Mm-hmm. He That's started good. to realise that um, he was getting feedback from the kids. Um, what he was saying to them, the way he was saying and doing things with them, Excellent, he was Marcia. getting the response, a positive response, which made him want to get involved more. Yeah, um, yeah. And I've noticed that his relationship with the children has changed more as well. They've, I want to say friends, but still they know that what he says and how he says it, yeah. um, they kind of agree, uh, but he'll consider their opinions and stuff. Yeah, I'm sure you'll agree when I say we're not teaching rocket science, are we, on the course, but we're just making parents think about those little things maybe which we yeah. don't think about, do we? Definitely. I think it's more psychological of how you deliver your parents' skills to your child. Um, and especially in today's day and age, you've just got to, I think it's a fine line where things can go wrong. So it's how you uh, say things and how you do things with your children to get them to see why you're doing certain things as well. And also as a parent, understanding why your child is doing things a certain way mm-hmm. and how, like, I think it's more about, more psychological, understanding yourself yeah. and your child and bettering that relationship between the two of you. And also, I think, even though it's a parenting course, family life in our house has definitely improved because Marshall. both of us have done the course. Yes. So when sometimes he's saying something to the children, I can see why he's saying it or what yeah. is the re- yeah. the reason behind it. Um, so then, like, we understand each other's parenting style more now, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good, mashallah. That's good. So basically going uh, to this course, a husband and wife, that makes a difference because you and both of you understand why the other person is saying and, Definitely. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Mashallah. You're on the same page, then, aren't yeah. you? Really, so to yes, so to we're speak. we're both off the same page, and without even saying, "Oh, this is why I'm doing this," he'll understand why I'm saying certain things to the children or doing things a certain way. Um, and then sometimes if he's doing something, whereas previously I think it would have been like, "Why did you do that? Why did you say that?" But now we kind of understand more what we're doing because we've both got a similar parenting. Style. Oh, mashallah. If I ask you, sister, what do you think? How is it going to have an impact on the rest of your life and your children's life? What sort of things uh, which help, which will be going to be helping you? Do you think it was the good choice of coming to the course and learning about these skills? That's the most important, rather than. Um, Definitely, um, my children. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old, mashallah. but there were people. Um, there was mothers on the courses who their uh, children. They um, varied in age from, mm-hmm. like, my kids to... There was people there with, like, adults, uh, children who were, like, 21, 22, etc. So um, how, like, a certain parenting style can um, relate to toddlers, to primary school children, to uh, kids that are in uni just by maybe tweaking it slightly, I think I definitely learned. And then hearing when we used to um, go week on week, Mm -hmm. um, we'd then try out the different things that we'd done that week and just see how um, we could implement it within the week on our children. And then having feedback off other moms, how they done things with their children Mm -hmm. um, who were a lot older than my children it kind of like made me think, okay, maybe this is a good skill to implement at home because even though my children are younger, somebody who's older has found it beneficial to them as well. Yeah. So I think definitely like hearing how it's helped uh, other moms as well and their relationship with their children, I think, yes, definitely it's helped and I'd do it again if I could. Okay, thank you. That's very good feedback. Thank you very much. Do you, um, do you think other people should also come on this course? Would you recommend the course to other mothers and fathers? For sure, especially like how my husband and I have both done it. Um, I think I think as parents, we always, like I said, think we know it all and uh, our way is the best way or how we were brought up. We all think we all turned out OK. So the way our parents done it must have been OK. But times have changed. So it's just, I think, taking a step back and looking at things differently is definitely helped. And I would recommend the course to anybody. Um, it's just 
a little while out of your time each week and it's definitely a skill I think that you can just build upon and even with your children you pass in the knowledge on to your children as well they'll remember the way you've parented them so yes, that will just carry on with them yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for uh, Sister Rima for coming on. Um, yes, we definitely. Uh, this course was about teaching ourselves and our children life skills. Really, these will be skills that will stay with us as parents and also with our children yeah. as well. And inshallah, when our children grow up to be parents, inshallah, they can pass on those same very skills to their children, inshallah, as well. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sister. Just a, a parting uh, message from you before you leave us. What would you like to say? Um, have a lovely Ramadan and inshallah I'm hoping that by Eid everything's sorted and everybody can spend Eid with their families and however so just stay safe, stay indoors. Definitely arm into that. Thank Amen. you very much for ringing. Amen. May Allah accept so our duas inshallah during this Amen. month. Thank you. Jazakallah. Thank you, Thank Thank you for ringing in. And Thank all of you brothers and sisters uh, remember us in your duas as well. Okay. Jazakallah. <coughs> so you know one thing I wanted to say because we're talking about discipline and discipline our children, we've just been talking about setting boundaries and the styles of boundaries that we send for our children. When children be, uh, misbehave, when they're not following the discipline system that we got in place, when one thing is very important, you have to distance, you have to separate the behavior from the person. This is very important. What's bad is the behavior. What's good is the child. The child is ours. The child is very dear and very special to us. What's unwanted, what's bad, is the temporary behavior that they're displaying or they're showing. This is very important. When a child begins to think that I am bad, you've lost the battle. You've lost the battle. You will lose that child. What we're trying to do is to make sure that we separate the unwanted behavior from the precious child which belongs to us. This is a very important point that we, we need to keep in mind when we're disciplining our children. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to our next topic, which is the time to calm down. Uh, as you're mentioning, uh, is the behavior and the children, we need to keep them separate. We need to make sure that we help our children to grow up in a nice and sensible way and uh, we don't criticize them too much. Uh, okay, when we are having any issue, right, our temper goes up. We lose our temper sometimes, and children do the same thing. And most of the time, they are learning from us the way we behave, the way we react. And when we ha are having different difficult situations, if I am throwing tantrum, if I am not controlling myself, my son or my daughter is basically, they are observing me. And then that's what they will do. And then we surprise, hang on a second, what's happened to our child? Why he or she cannot control him or herself uh, when something is going wrong? But the thing is, is that what we are showing to our children? We need to reflect on that. Okay. So time to calm down is a way of helping children. Not just helping children, but also helping adults when emotions are running very high. So time to calm down is effectively a cooling off period that gives everybody a chance to calm down. You know, think of a typical situation where two people are having a go at each other. One of the first things you do is what? Separate them, isn't it? Separate them, which will give them time to cool down and calm down. So this is a very important tool time to calm down which can be used with ourselves but also with our children as well <clears throat> and don't forget we as parents we are the emotional thermometer for the family and we need to be able to model a calm response so that our children can learn from it and also model it themselves if i as a parent am angry and i have been angry if I display anger all the time, what do ask yourself, what do my children learn from that? And if their father, if their sons, what will they take from that <clears throat> as a continuous 
lifelong example that they see from me as their father and then they take that into a marriage think about that think about your daughter who sees her father i'm just giving the father as an example who sees a father who's always getting angry losing his cool she because a daughter will always compare men against her father every male will measure up to her father imagine that you as a father used to lose your cool in front of your children what will that daughter think that when i get married am i going to expect the same are my children going to expect the same because this is how my i always seen my father a very sad picture i've just painted for you there but imagine that you as a father and a mother can model a response of being calm so when emotions are high and children are involved you're able to use this tool called time to calm down to resolve the situation to cool down tempers yeah and to move on positively <clears throat> imagine that same daughter and that same son who were used to seeing their father and mother being able to use this tool of time to calm down as they were growing up because that will be something that they were so used to they will all show model that example themselves and then inshallah when they get married when they have partners and when they have children inshallah they will be in a much better place to use that skill that tool of time to calm down children the way i look at it uh, brother khalid is uh, basically they are just like sponge yeah right? absolutely or a dry land where uh, there is many years there is no rain has been fallen uh, so when water comes down on that sponge or that land that is going to be absorbed very very quickly and children whatever they are looking at even though they are very young one years two years old they are observing and absorbing everything and that's what we need to do we need to make sure we model ourselves as parents in the best possible way we are not perfect nobody can be perfect on this face of this earth uh, because we have got issues we have got you know different things but when we especially when in front of our children we need to make sure we try our best to behave in the best possible way we learn from our mistakes that's the normal thing uh, but in front of our children if we can stay calm and if we go through these 10 uh, steps which we're going to stay uh, share with you in a minute uh, that will help you in your own situations as parents between husband and wife or probably with others and between you and your child these 10 steps are very easy to implement and you will inshallah benefit from these 10 steps right so okay let's uh, before we go on to just quickly go through these 10 steps as you know uh, in our religion al islam there's many uh, there's verses and there's also uh, sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding the topic of anger and and how we should calm our things down how allah doesn't like unwanted uh, unrestricted uh, anger anger is a natural emotion but it's something that should be controlled okay so you need to use this tool called time to calm down with your children what can be the possible steps that you will take to resolve a situation so the first thing you should do <coughs> is stop what you're doing so a situation has arisen emotions are high it may be a child is throwing a tantrum for example and you're doing something the first thing you need to do is stop what you're doing stop what you're doing pause to calm yourself because when the child's angry the last thing you want to do is blow yourself up as well become angry uh, high on emotions and show a rage so stop what you're doing pause to calm yourself if you're not calm there is no way you will be able to calm that child down let me just give you a quick example can you remember a time when you've been to a supermarket and you've seen a mother having a right go at the child yes you know exactly what i'm talking about 
And not only did you see it, we actually heard it from the next aisle. The mother's having a right go or the father's having a right go at this usually very, very young child. And, you know, sometimes people think, oh, my God, you know, put their hands on their forehead and just walk away thinking, what is going on here? So stop what you're doing. Pause to calm yourself. Step back. Take a deep breath. Even have a glass of water. Yeah. Can I just interrupt you? Sorry. Yeah. I know you're in the flow. So, yeah. Um, Sometimes people. Parents that don't know how to deal with that situation. Child is basically on the floor in the supermarket, yeah. and some parents don't know. Yes, they are shouting. I've seen that. You have seen that, and many of us seen them. But sometimes parents, mothers or fathers, they don't understand. Okay, what shall I do? I'm. They're, they're becoming embarrassed basically from from you know the situation. Yeah. So it's, there are different um, you know, ways of dealing with it. But as you said, you need to as a parent you need to stay calm you need to stay stay collective and deal with the situation and if you've got a bottle of water yep yeah absolutely so stop what you're doing pause to calm yourself take a deep breath have a glass of water if required give your full attention give full attention see eye contact at their level and listen to the child a lot of times we don't even know why the child's doing that we can't even read the behavior. We don't know the reasons behind it. Yes, yeah, sometimes you might know, but a lot of times we actually don't know what's happened. Why is my child in this situation? Yeah, Take the time to get eye contact and listen. Empathize with the feeling, even if their behavior is unacceptable. Remember what I just said? I said the behavior is bad, the child is not. So empathize with the feeling even if the behavior is unacceptable and say words which are appropriate. I can see that you're angry and it's not okay to shout or hit out. So, you know, feeling words rather than say, why are you angry and lose your temper and use kind of harsh words. Say to the child, it's time to calm down, but say it in a calm voice and repeat it if necessary. Remember the golden rule. If you're not calm, you can't calm anybody else down either. Younger children may benefit from a safe or from a calming place. So if you've got somewhere in the house, maybe the child can sit down, have some time out. Use that. <clears throat> Think about using a calmer visual object to help recovery. Again, some of these things may vary depending on the age of your child. For example, if it's a child who's, I don't know, 17, 18, you're not going to give them a cuddly toy to calm down, are you? <laughs> it's going to be appropriate to their age. <clears throat> Stay with them if they need your help to calm themselves down. You know, just sitting with them. If they're hurting themselves or others, then place a gentle hand over theirs and say... I can't let you do that. Yeah? If they're hurting themselves or others, place a gentle hand over theirs, we're talking about your child, and say to them, no, I can't let you do that. Very important. <clears throat> and then welcome them whenever they are ready to rejoin what is happening. So these are some basic steps. Again, you can... Uh, kind of change them to suit your situation, but they're kind of basic steps to how you may um, use this tool, which is known as time to calm down. As you brother mentioned, um, <coughs> that uh, we need to stay calm uh, when we are helping our children. Uh, generally what happens, uh, if some something happens, I, as a parent, become more angry, uh, and then that, ca that causes more problem than anyth anything else. When is the calm, uh, time to calm down? Make sure you are not humiliating your child. You are not saying, go and sit down somewhere, right? And you are shouting at that child. And that child is saying, hang on a second, my mom or dad, they are asking me to calm down, right? But as a parent, are we sending the right signal? We are already basically in that situation where we need, we need to calm down first. And then our children. So as I said before, our children are observing us, they are listening, they are doing anything, whatever. Yeah. Um, 
uh, we are doing. Yeah. Sorry, Brother Khalid, I just interrupted me. I, I lost everything, whatever <laughs> I was going to say. But you're still okay. calm, aren't you? I am calm, Mashallah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've learned this. I'm, 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 I've read these 10 steps. Mashallah. Can I just go back to your step one and step three? They yeah. are interlinked. The first step was stop what you are doing. And third one was give full attention. If you are doing 10 million other things, at the same time you are trying to give full attention, that's not going to happen, is it? Right. And also because, you know, when you're not paying full attention, your child knows you're not paying full no, attention. That's it. Mm-hmm. Your child needs you 100%. Yes. 100% exactly. of you, your child needs. Mm-hmm. Okay. And wording is more important, just like uh, sis, uh, Sister Rima was saying earlier on, Rima Shaheen was saying earlier on, that wording is very, very important. Whatever you say, how you communicate with uh, your children, that is going to make a big impact uh, on your child uh, when you're communicating with them. Um, so it is important. W- the way you say things, it is very important. And your body language, that is even more important because body language gives clues uh, which we cannot even communicate with our words sometimes. So if my face is red, if my face is, you know, just I'm um, really angry, my child is looking at me. My child is basically saying, hang on a second, my dad is really, really angry. Uh, how we can, you know, just um, stay me calm. Okay, Jazakallah for listening today. I um, really appreciate the, all the text which we have sent you and uh, thank you very much. It's very encouraging uh, to see whether people are making uh, any value to this, uh, these shows. Uh, next week, inshallah, we'll have a sister with us. Uh, she's um, all the way from London. Uh, and uh, she will be mainly uh, speaking in Urdu. So anybody who is going to be um, benefit from Urdu uh, sessions, uh, Urdu show, please ask them to join us. Uh, we will try our best to help you during this uh, these n- Two more shows left now? Uh, yeah, this is yeah, the second weekend. This is the second weekend, yes. No, we might, do we get four weekends in here? I'm not sure. Okay, four yeah. Weekends? Okay, we are not sure. I mean, because. Okay, okay now time is up do you now. Want to just quickly Thank tell you them very much. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry.